We'll start off by talking about a few limit theorems and then we'll go into some examples. So first of all, I want you to note that the limit as x approaches a of some constant c will always equal that constant c. So in an example, suppose that the limit as x approaches, suppose, 0 of the number 1 will always equal 1. So that's just a really simple theorem to point out, is that when you take the limit of a constant number, you will always be approaching that constant. Okay? So suppose we had the limit as x approaches the number 3 of, suppose, 8. Well, that will always equal 8. Okay? Now, we want to point out some other theorems. So look at the two parts on the bottom. If the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals some number l, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals some number m, then we can state the following. Well, what we can state is that the limit as suppose x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches a of g of x is simply equivalent to l times m. The same would be true if we were adding these two things. Well, we would have L plus M. And suppose that we were dividing these two things. Well, then we would have L divided by M. So it's basically the same thing here. Uh, so this is a really important theorem to carry on. And, and let's go ahead and look at the next page here on the video so that you can see the rest of these theorems. And they're pretty common sense. So here you can see exactly what I was pointing out. So here's the rule for addition and subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now the one thing that I left out was scalar multiplication, and that is that if you're multiplying by some constant, k, and that's where we point this out here, simply pull out the constant and multiply k times that value. So in this case, we were talking about the limit as x approaches a of k times f of x. Well, from up here at the top, we said that the limit as x approached a of f of x was the number l. So notice how right here, we simply just multiplied k times l. And that's an important takeaway from this. So these are just a few of the theorems. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So here are a couple examples. The first says the limit as x approaches 3 of 3 times g of x minus f of x. Okay, well, we've got x approaching 3, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x equal to negative 1, and the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x equal to 7. So we've got these two important facts up here at the top, and we're going to make use of them. The first thing that I'm going to do is actually rewrite this statement right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, the limit as x approaches 3 of 3 times g of x, and then I'm going to say minus the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and take a look back at our theorems for a second. And looking at our theorems, once again, I told you that if you have a, a scalar multiplication where you're multiplying that function f of x by some constant k, you can simply factor it out as we did in this case. All right, 
So we're going to go ahead and look at the example once more and we're going to do that. So right here we can actually factor out this 3. So we would then write, let's see here, 3 times the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x minus the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Well, now it's pretty simple because we know from up here at the top that the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is simply 7. And we know the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is simply negative 1. So we have something that looks like this. 3 times 7 minus negative 1 which of course is simply 21 minus negative 1 and this actually becomes addition so our final answer here is going to be 22 so that's the first part of this example now we're going to use the same information for the bottom half here alright so what I'm going to do is simply rewrite this and I'm going to state well the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x minus the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Okay. Now that I've done that, it's really simple because we have most of this information already. The first part, the limit as x approaches 3 of x, well, remember that this right here is simply a polynomial. So recall from a, a previous theorem that whenever you have a polynomial, all you have to do is plug in. So plugging in 3 into this function, what do you get? Well, you get 3. So we end up having 3 plus, and the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is negative 1 from up here at the top. So plus a negative 1 divided by, well, the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x from up at the top is 7, so 7 minus, and once more the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is again negative 1. Alright, so we have 3 plus negative 1. Well, what is 3 plus negative 1? That is simply 2. And 7 minus a negative 1, well, that becomes 7 plus 1, which is 8, so 2 over 8, and when you reduce this, well, what do you get? You simply get 1 fourth, and that's what we get as the limit, as x approaches 3, of this given, you know, composition of functions. Made with DoodleCast Pro.